So moving forward, um, so you mentioned before that you recently returned to studies, um, mm -hmm. to your studies, and you are currently studying at the Krumberg Academy in Germany with mm -hmm. the legendary cellist and teacher Franz Helmerson. Um, for those that may not be familiar, can you share with us a little bit about Kronberg and how it's unique from other music schools, considering um, you've obviously studied at some very prestigious institutions mm -hmm. already? And also, finally, um, can you share with us what it's been like studying with the great Mr. Helmerson? <clears throat> sure. Um, yeah, well, Kronberg Academy is a really, I think, a very special place um it's it's near frankfurt so about 20 minutes on the train outside of frankfurt you're in kronberg and um i mean i grew up knowing about this place because a lot of the cellists that i was looking up to as i was coming up um had been involved there or or, or studied there and so it was a place that i always thought oh wow it's like i really kind of looked looked up to it and thought, was curious about discovering you know what 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 it's about and um, I would say, in my experience so far, what sets it apart is that you really have a large diversity of different kinds of musicians who are coming in. Um, in this last year, for instance, uh, I worked with uh, Reinhard Goebel, who is one of the most, uh, most influential uh, period performance practice Baroque music specialist uh, conductors in Germany. And then on the other hand, uh, working with uh, Brendel and um, conductors uh, like Eschenbach and or Andras Schiff or uh, Tabea Zimmermann or um, anyway, it's a very, very diverse um, group of, of mentors who come and um, for me, it's been very interesting to sort of get to know these perspectives and every person that you play for in a way becomes sort of um, also a mirror in which you can understand your playing through a new lens. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very small school and it's focused for, uh, uh, you know, string soloists and piano soloists. Uh, but we also do a lot of chamber music and uh, because they have a new beautiful facility there's a lot of opportunities to also do our own concerts uh, in, in in the concert hall uh, there and it, yeah it's just really in my experience just all about all about the music <laughs> and and being able to just have a place that especially for me um you know and in the beginning stages of my career, it's if I'm not traveling and performing somewhere, I have a wonderful home that I can just learn, uh, focus on the music, uh, the atmosphere there, you know, five minutes walk from my front door, I'm in the middle of the forest. Um, but I also have a grocery store one block away from my house. So it's, it's a sort of, um, it's a privilege to have a space where you can just really grow and develop, especially I would say in, in the stage that I'm at where, you know, I've had for several years kind of have been performing professionally, but I still uh, love to have the opportunity to learn from more people. And um, and yeah, in regards to um, Franz Helmerson, he's actually somebody I met for the first time when I was 17 years old at the Ravinia Festival in Chicago. Um, and then the next uh, next summer or two, um, I also played for him in masterclass in at Verbier Festival mm -hmm. uh, in Switzerland, and so I just always felt that this is somebody that I would really like to work with more. I felt uh, I feel like his his um, his in intuitive uh, sense in the way he works with students. He really I feel. I, I, maybe I can describe it through my experience of, of watching him teach others because I usually mm -hmm. feel when I've seen that I, I you know sometimes you, you hear a musician and you think you know there's something that could be better about this but I can't quite put my finger on it mm -hmm. and somehow he always finds a way to uh, express that but also express it in the way that that somebody I think can can understand very much tailored to the person in front of him 
So I just have a lot of trust for his um, his uh, his taste and also his thoughts about music and um, and so I've it's been nice. I've I've played a huge variety of repertoire for him and um, and it's it's good because sometimes he'll help me realize something that I, I've been feeling a little stuck certain aspects of understanding this piece and he'll say something that liberates me from that. And so I think as a teacher, he's very much focused on, he's very in touch with the, the, the point of what we're doing and how to make the music, uh, uh, the line of communication of what you're doing um, more free and more direct. Um, and so I really, I really appreciate that about about working with him for sure and i think he also has a particular um special special understanding and connection to a lot of the 20th century cello repertoire um through of course having a very close relationship with rostropovich um and and among among other things um but i remember you know last october i played the first cello concerto by Schnitke, which very rarely appears in concert and it's a massive it's almost like a Mahler symphony but in a totally different language for cello and orchestra but it has that kind of scale to it and um not only had he played it which is so rare but he had actually toured it with an orchestra and he oh wow he had a big duty free bag um his part um which i, I think was was a a previously released edition and had some interesting uh, insights into, into into the score and of course a lot of you know fingerings and bowings that were interesting to to see you know what were his solutions uh, in that piece but that that is really cool because there's not many people that you could go and, and play that kind of repertoire with and get that sort of insight yeah yeah and I'm curious because um, obviously Kronberg fosters some of the world's finest musicians and especially the cello classes there are just it's world renowned and so i've always wondered like what all do you guys i mean i'm sure it's different with every piece but like what all do you guys really talk about is it mostly just you know different musical phrasing ideas because obviously it's not like he's having to tell you mm -hmm. like this needs to be in tune or you know like I'm, mm -hmm. it's not the technical aspect that you guys are so much focusing on but the musical i'm sure so I think everybody, every, uh, everybody's different, probably, um, you know, in what they're, what they're working on. Um, and also I think teacher to teacher, there's a lot of different, a lot of variety. Like I can sort of speak about what it's like working with, uh, Mr. Homerson, but, mm -hmm. um, other teachers, I'm not, not so sure in terms of the sure. ones that are giving, um, private lessons, because the way it works is we all have our primary teacher that we see pretty, you know, pretty frequently, but we also work with all of the guests coming in. And, and it's great, for instance, when there's a pianist, um, a lot of times we actually just get to work on them in a duo form. So we would maybe work on a sonata or two, but oh. play together. Um, yeah, I, I would say that the, actually, sometimes there's a, there's a great link between technical concepts and the ability to freely musically express oneself, even when you're at a, a very high level of playing. And like in my experience, um, uh, Mr. Hammerson, Hammerson has told me a few few things, for instance, about my usage of, of the bow, which um, when repeated enough, uh, in, 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 in lessons, like finally I started to, again, it's like sometimes concepts take a while to sort of understand and integrate, but sometimes it's those really basic physical um, things that are noticed or commented on, which end up actually really liberating the music making um, mm. and, and making, sometimes I, I'm playing repertoire and I think, yeah, generally I'm feeling good like this is this is feeling right i have an understanding of this piece um, but there are certain aspects of it that are not quite working and a lot of them could be 
very basic shifts of perspective of how mm. one is approaching the instrument. And, and for me, actually, um, I mean, less so, you know, outside of my things with, with Kronberg, generally speaking, I've, I'm really interested in historical instruments. And so that's another uh, amazing teacher is to, to work. Uh, recent, a couple of weeks ago, I got a transitional bow, um, which is, you know, modeled around, you know, the 1790s, what was typical, I mean, of course, you know, they were always changing, but um, sort of between, like, let's say it's, it's a classical, classical bow. And um, I really enjoy playing on that bow uh, for Haydn, uh, Mendelssohn, Schubert, even like mm -hmm. okay. some, some romantic composers as well. Um, but beyond just enjoying playing on it, um, it's also made me realize some things um, through that difference of perspective and, and breaking the norm of just always playing on my, my you know, normal uh, bow that I, I then go to pick up, pick up the bow that I'm usually playing on and I'm relating, it in, relating to it in a slightly different way. I, I consider more possibilities and find more, more, uh, more possible colors and, and especially mm -hmm. articulations and, and way of drawing out the sound in, in the instrument. Um, so that, that's fascinating too. So that, and all this is to say that I think there's also something to be said about that. It's not that it's all musical things or technical things, but sometimes, yeah. um, sometimes they really have a lot to do with each other actually. Yeah. Yeah. No, and that's that's a really good point because I was actually teaching a lesson the other day and we were working on shifting and <clears throat> that's one aspect obviously that is very technical but also it's to serve a musical purpose, right? So like when you shift, you'll shift differently depending on where you are in the music or what you believe you're trying to convey through that shift. So like some might be a little bit more... Um, I guess juicier. I, I don't know. Uh -huh. And some you want to be more subtle with. So no, I, I that's that's really. I'm glad you shared yeah. that because yeah, yeah, and the like. I think the mastery mastery of the instrument really has to do with being able to. Uh, it's actually mastery of the ear and the yeah. conception first and foremost, and and yeah. and the ability to um, reduce the space between the technique and your and you, what your uh, inspiration is and your what you hear in the music right. to be able to, for it to be seamlessly integrated. Um, like in, in performance, if you if you can somehow be liberated from the instrument, you know, I think that's like the place that all, people are shooting for. But in order to get there, it takes such a specific focus on every aspect of the physicality of what, what you're doing. But I think yeah. if you never lose sight of the music, um, yeah. You don't get off the path and just become about physicality or technique for its own sake. Right. Um, right. But it's yeah, more and more. I think more than ever, I'm focused on more sort of fundamentals in my own yeah. playing, um, mm -hmm. which is fascinating because, like, of course, I'm playing. I you know I hope better than I ever have in, in previous years, but I'm somehow more focused on the basics. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that's kind of the beauty beauty of it uh, too. Yeah, and I mean, just quickly before we move on, um, the idea of conceptualizing in your head what you're trying to do before you actually play it. I think that's mm -hmm. fascinating because oftentimes as students, it's easy for us to be assigned a certain piece and just go into it with, almost no convictions and just worry so much about just learning the notes and and just having somewhat of a, a rudimentary understanding of the piece before you really tackle it. And, you know, I think we lose sight of, of what, why we do this. And so when we do that sometimes, and, and so to already have in your head, uh, and and this is obviously evolving. It, it evolves over time as you grow with the piece, but to already have so, certain convictions and ideas that you want to incorporate, I think that, that, like you said before, that that's so important. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 